Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you coming out. I'm also a sweet boy. Uh, I, I do want to let you guys know something. I want to start off with a bit of good news. Is that uh, I just want you guys to know that during the setup here, I'm going to be up here for about 10 minutes, but you guys can definitely trust me. Uh, recently came across my calendar from summer of 1982. <laughs> I did not go to any parties, so... Uh, I was also two years old. <laughs> but no, I want, I want to talk about uh, Justice Kavanaugh for one second. Um, I just want to talk about something real quick. Like, I just want to talk about how religious that man is, like he's just so religious. I mean, he's super, super duper religious. Like he volunteers at his church and teaches classes at Sunday school. He feeds the homeless people out of his church. He's always gonna side with the religious right on like everything. And it's just for that reason, since he's so pious and so religious, that it's just, it's really hard for me to believe these women. Because when was the last time you ever heard of someone that religious sexually assaulting someone? Like, when was the last time you heard of someone who's qualified to teach a religion to thousands of people just touching someone who didn't want to be touched? I mean, possibly a child or something? I don't know. I mean, look, I just want you guys to think, like, I don't know where you guys are from, but I'm from Boston, and that's where I think this doesn't happen. <laughs> The biggest cheering section over there. I thought you were <laughs> um, oh man, it's good to be here. Um, I'm glad basketball's back. I'm excited about that. Uh, I was watching basketball recently. LeBron James is now on the Lakers, and I was watching uh, somebody watch LeBron James at this bar. And at this bar, this guy got so mad at the TV and how good at basketball LeBron was that during the game, he slams his fist down on the bar, he shoots straight up and shouts at the TV and just goes, I hate LeBron James! LeBron James can suck my dick! And I was like, oh, can he, sir? <laughs> He's all five foot six, 145 pounds, you gonna make that large man do it? Something tells me he's gonna put up a fight. And here's the other thing about that dude, if LeBron James were to, in fact, suck your dick, he would immediately become your favorite basketball player. <laughs> like, there's no question about it. The guy would be like, well, you know, I used to hate LeBron James. But then, um, <laughs> I do like when people have, like, a uh, perception of, like, an athlete or somebody famous, and they think that because they know this person in their public life, like, they can just, like, become friends with these people and just, like, treat them how they would treat just, like, a buddy. Like, one time I was at a football game, and at this football game, I actually had really good seats. And uh, I was sitting on the 50-yard line, not too far ahead of the press booth. And in the press booth announcing the game was legendary New York Giants quarterback, Phil Sims. Okay, and this guy starts walking down the aisle, sort of next to where I'm sitting. And when he gets to about my seat, he stops, he looks up at the press booth, notices Phil Sims is in there, and his eyes just light up. So then he starts shouting, at the press booth. He just goes, hey, Phil! Phil! Hey! Hey, Phil Sims! Hey! Phil! 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 Hey, Phil! Hey, Phil Sims! Hey, Phil, man! Phil, I love you! Hey, Phil! Phil, down here, huge fan! Phil Sims, hey! Phil! Phil! him how to smoke medical marijuana. Um, yeah, it was a very weird experience for me, because my whole life I tried to hide from my family that I even knew what marijuana was. Yeah. Obviously, I wasn't doing a very good job at that, because my mom came up to me and she was like, Andy, you need to teach your father how to smoke his medicine. And I was like, Mom, what makes you think I know how to smoke dad's medicine? I am not a doctor. And she goes, yeah, but you're a comedian. And I was like, good point. So, <laughs> Anyways, I taught my dad how to smoke, right? And he was so stoned. 
but he was too macho to admit that the weed had any effect on him. So he was just like, nah, I don't feel anything. I was like, really, Dad? Nothing? He's like, no, nothing. I'm like, not even a little bit, Dad? He goes, no, I think I just have a really high marijuana tolerance. And I was like, all right, dude, for the last 20 minutes, you've been staring at the microwave. <laughs> Asking me over and over again if this was a TV show or a movie. Um, I think it did something. I don't care how many hot pockets you put in there, man. It's not the food network. <laughs> but I actually, I don't smoke that much weed. And it's mainly because weed technology freaks me out. Like, I lived in LA for a while, there's a marijuana store like every corner, right? I got a friend that worked at one of these stores, comes up to me, he's just like, yo, Andy, you gotta try this new stuff. CBDs, cannabinoids, yo, you smoke it and your mind stays clear, but your whole body goes numb. I was like, whoa, you just described Lou Gehrig's disease. <laughs> Like, why would anyone want that? <laughs> Sounds like the worst high ever. You smoke it, you're like, I can't feel my arms or my legs, but I'm still just as bored as I was before. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, anyone here got kids? <laughs> what was that noise over here? That was like a combination of a woo and a go. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, I just. <laughs> Whoever made that noise, like, don't bother to do it on Saturday. Uh, but Dale, um, no, I don't have any kids, and it is fantastic. Um, my brother has kids, though. He has two little girls. And not too long ago, when they were two and five, I went down to his house in Washington, D.C., and I babysat for them for 10 days straight. Oh. Yeah, that's kind of the reaction I'm looking for, because that shit was insane, right? <laughs> like the younger one, whatever, she's a baby, she poops her pants and runs off laughing, you gotta go catch her, ultimately it's an adorable yet disgusting game. <laughs> the older one is a legitimately crazy person. <laughs> she is five years old, so she takes words, form into sentences. Did she make sense? Hardly ever. It was just bananas all the time. Like one second, she was super happy. The next second, she was mad at me, saying like the meanest things I've ever heard in my entire life. Then right after that, she's laughing at some joke that I don't understand. Directly after that, she's crying because she feels bad about herself. And I'm like, oh my God. You are like every girl I have ever dated. <laughs> And if you don't think so, this is what happened. I went down, uh, we went to a playground. We were having an amazing time. She runs up to me, she gives me a hug, and she's like, Uncle Andy, I love you. And then she runs off. Literally five minutes later, she runs back up to me. And she's like, Uncle Andy, I don't love you anymore. I love this other guy over here who makes more money than you do. He's my new uncle. And I was like, wow, you are like every girl I've ever dated. <laughs> but my oldest niece makes me nervous. And that's because at such a young age, she has the ability to be a complete bitch. And here's the thing about that, I do not want to call women bitches, I really don't, especially one of my nieces, because I love those two little girls more than anything in the world, so know this, when I call her that name, I really mean it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this is what happened. I went down there, I was babysitting, right? She was being a terrible person, so I put her to timeout, okay? Timeout is this. You go and you sit on the stairs for five minutes and you think about what you've done, okay? Five minutes passes, I walk up to her like, hey, have you thought about what you've done? And she starts yelling at me. She's like, well, my mommy and daddy get home. Well, here's the thing. Her mommy and daddy, they were in Chile, right? They were in South America for 10 days vacationing. That's why, that's why I was there for 10 days, okay? She's like, when my mommy and daddy get home, they're gonna be so mad at you because they put me in charge. And I was like, hold on a second. <laughs> daddy put me in charge. Maybe your mommy and daddy aren't gonna want to come home. <laughs> Maybe they're gonna hear about how bad of a girl you've been being, and they're gonna want to stay in Chile forever. <laughs> and she looks at me and just goes, ugh, Chile. I was like, It was the one time there was a murder my niece just picked her up and punched 
church in traffic. Could have gotten away with it too. Judge would have been like, Andy, why'd you put your niece in the traffic? And I'm like, well, Judge, I said Chile, and she corrected me with Chile. I'm like, hold on. The court rules, that is the bitchiest thing you can say to someone. <laughs> Case dismissed, justifiable homicide. It's what you're Anyways, guys, I'm Andy Oshkoff. That's been my time. Thank you all very much.